probably one of the most talked about episodes of a podcast I have been on. Okay. Not my podcast. Someone else's podcast is the episode with my friends over at Dadville. Okay. Listen, Dave Barnes and John McLaughlin, they are hilarious and they lean into the Dadville dad life dad swagger all the things on their show called dadville and what, what i love about it is you know i thought it was just gonna be like this funny show when i got on it no like deep talks i, I actually i think their their you know subtitle or the little byline of their podcast is called funny thoughts and deep talks right and we had both of them my episode of the dadville podcast aired a few weeks ago you guys can look it up and uh they just really lean into parenting life in general and honestly they are some of the funniest people that i know so you guys are going to want to go check out dadville so just listen to dadville wherever you find or listen to your podcast um some other episodes that they've had that you may want to listen to is they've had ben rector on the podcast they've had chris tomlin on the podcast they've had tyler hubbard from florida georgia line on the podcast and i'm telling you that they prepare questions that we weren't ready for okay so wherever you listen to your podcast make sure you go check out dadville the dadville podcast you're going to love it they release episodes every tuesday i am on a really cool looking sofa at south hall farms with my buddy jay jay say hi to the human hope family what's up how are you <laughs> We, we, ju we just, um, I just left maybe, uh, I'm not gonna say top five, maybe top 10 coolest moments of my entire life, because I feel like there is going to be more cool moments that are going to, um, outshine what I just experienced in my beekeeping life in the next decade. So I want to, I want to give like room for improvement, but that was incredible. You just took me out, um, where, where would you say that we were at the main apiary? We were at the mating yard. So like the mating we, yard. Yeah, you were close to like, there is really no main apiary, but uh, you were, you were at the heart of the growth and the energy of the future generations. Yes. That's where you were. So good. So good. So um, uh, just a little, uh, a little bit of backstory here. When, as most people know, and actually not a lot of my um, podcast listeners do know, unless you follow me on Instagram, but podcast specific, I was gifted a, a, a beehive, I think is what I called it, when uh, for Christmas, last Christmas. And I remember thinking, I don't know what to do with this thing. And so I just built it. Like I, I just was like, well, let me just put it together. So that was fun. And I thought that was going to be it. And it was going to be in the garage. But then I like went on YouTube and I don't know if it, what documentary it was, but my jaw was hanging open at what these bees do. One thing led to another. You all that listen to this know that I've learned to make knives. I've learned to solve Rubik's cubes. I've learned magic. I get addicted, fly fishing, all the things. But this one, for some reason, hook, line, and sinker. And I jumped all in. Uh, and then my friend Danica McKellar, who's a friend of both of ours, she's like, you've got to meet my friend Jay. <laughs> And so she put us on a, on a, on a message and I ended up going to, to B school and literally was drinking out of a fire hydrant and began my journey of beekeeping. And I find myself here now sitting with you, Jay, what I would love for you to do is just to unpack how you ended up so consumed and in love and maybe even healed by these bees. I think, I, I don't know if I'm all the way healed. Are oh. any of us all the way healed? Ooh, no, right? I, like, no, definitely not. We're, we're, this is a journey. This is a struggle. But I will say that I never thought I'd be sitting on this couch yeah. with you today. Yeah. I never thought I'd be living and breathing bees every single day. Right. Uh, I thought I'd be an actor, honestly. I really? grew up thinking I'd be in show okay. business. And I was a cameraman for many, many years. Wow. Uh, and all of a sudden, one day, I thought, I got to do more for this world. Huh. Uh, as I'm sure you have felt yep. the same way. Yep. I got to do more for this world. So- I became a fireman and I was a fireman in LA and I loved it. It was great. Uh, got married, moved to Tennessee, was a fireman for another 12 years. And when you're a fireman, you work for 48 hours, then you're off for 96 hours. Right. What are you going to do for 96 hours, right? right? That's a lot of time. You got to do something. And I'm, I'm someone who I got to be busy. I got to be doing something and yeah. I want to be furthering myself in some way. So my wife read an article about how bees were in trouble in the Tennessean. 
in 2008. Now, are you still in LA? Uh, we're back here in, back in Franklin. Here. Yep, okay, okay. We're, we moved here at that point. That's right. No kids. Okay. Uh, so really nothing to do other than go to work and, yeah. and hang out and stuff. It was a great time. And she read an article about how they were in trouble. And this was during colony collapse disorder that happened around that time period. And I remember reading this article being like, why is everybody afraid of bees? Like there's something about it that's pretty cool. And I love helping people. Well, maybe I can just help some bees as well. Yeah. And one thing leads to another. I get two hives. And then within a week, I want a hundred. It like absolutely hooked me and it continues to hook me. That's the thing. Like I love telling people is this little bug, this yeah. tiny little bug yeah, yeah. will teach you a lesson every day about yourself, about the bees, about this world, leadership, following. I mean, you name it, I can go on and on. And it's just like, it's literally that snowball down the hill and it's just bigger and bigger and bigger until now I'm sitting on a couch with you talking about it. I mean, okay, so take us to firefighting. Take us to... Probably, if, if you look at your story, you know, the stressors that are involved in that job, comparatively speaking to what you do now, how ha have bees helped in your journey of healing from what maybe you've had to, I mean, it's probably pretty traumatic things that you had to see as a firefighter. Yes. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, there's one chaotic environment and now I'm in another one, right? Like yeah. bees are super chaotic. Yeah. And <laughs> what I realized was that, um, you know, you have chaos is a matter of perspective. Right. You've got to have perspective. And sometimes, you know, you're not necessarily part of the chaos, right. the chaos you've come up upon and you need to, you know, assess it, you know, handle things, that sort of thing. But usually the best way to deal with chaos is you take a step back. Mm. You, you separate yourself and believe it or not, it's not as crazy as you think. Well, I feel like in beekeeping, it's the same thing. There's a million bees flying around your head. It's super crazy. It's, you know, totally um, imposing and you're not really sure what to do. You take a deep breath, yeah. you stop. Yeah. Um, beekeeping is very meditative. So you like sort of take a step back um, and really gather your thoughts and then go for your plan of attack. And guess what? In firefighting, plan equals peace. You have a plan, uh -huh. you go for it, uh -huh. but guess what? <laughs> Most of the time that's not what ends up right, happening. That's right. not where you go. That's okay. Like, and beekeeping is the same way. You got a plan of attack for the day, Guess what? You open up the hive, it's queenless. Mm. Labifa, she's Labifa she's hurt, bounced. you know, or the mm. the yeah, the package is, has flown off. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna freak out. Right. You're gonna take a take a minute and then come up with a plan. And so that's what I had to do in firefighting. And it's now just transitioned right into beekeeping. But you know, there's something more here that that yeah. I feel like is worth talking about. Yeah. I unfortunately in 20 year career of firefighting yeah. saw a lot of things. Yeah. And this world is really rough. Sure. And whether you can, you know, deal with things or not, uh, going through traumatic incidents, um, in, you know, it, it affects you, uh -huh. and it's like a scar. I like to say it's like death by paper cut. It's like wow. just a little bit over time, and eventually, you know, you gotta that scar tissue can only hold on for so long. Yep. And what I didn't do when I was in firefighting was talk about it, mm. and I didn't take a minute and try and take care of myself. Uh, I bottled it up and particularly suicides or kids always just, they continue to wreck me. Wow. Uh, and so there was many times where, uh, I would deal with a really bad incident and I would come home and guess what? The bees would save me. They wow. would literally bring me back down to earth. They would cause me to stop what I was doing, take mm -hmm. a deep breath. Um, you talk about this, uh, quite frequently that there is some magic in this world yeah. that God has put here. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Right. You can't exactly describe it. Totally. The bees is that my version of that. Wow. That's my Carlos Whitaker magic story. Yes. Like those bees, there's an energy that I feel when the bees leave the hive, they fly around your head. Yeah. There is something like I'm talking to bugs. All, like yeah. Jay talks to insects. Like yeah. this is the weirdest thing. I grew up in a family of actors. Like we're none of us are bug people <laughs> right. at all. Right. And bugs are something you squish. Like that's reality. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm now completely flipped and I talk to bees all day long. Uh, their magic, I can't describe, but it has mm. saved me. It's my therapy. Yeah. Um, I'm a big believer in therapy. Yeah. I know you are yep, too. too. Um, and I'm a big believer now in talking about your feelings, talking about your thoughts, and yeah. that makes you better, makes other people better. Uh, I grew up in a, you know, I was, I had three kids in the family, older sister and a younger sister. I'm the middle child. Okay. I'm your classic middle child, right? My head's on a swivel. I'm trying to figure out, am I the younger or the older? Right. You know, where do I what fit in? It, yeah, it? I can give hugs like no one's business because I grew up in a family that were huggers and yeah. they were they, we talk about things. And I'm trying to, you know, talk about my feelings more. I'm trying to get in the fire service particularly. Yeah. People need to talk about stuff. Wow. You can't bottle it up anymore. Um, and the bees are one thing that has saved me and enabled me to start, you know, getting a good third per person perspective of, all right, what, what's, what am I dealing with right now? What can I fix? What can I not fix? Uh -huh. Where do I pivot? 
Yes. Uh, because that's all I'm freaking doing right. every single day. Every single day. And I mean, that's I, okay. I you pivot today like <laughs> four or five times. I was like, oh, nope. Jay's uh -huh. pivoting. Uh -huh. Oh, we're yeah. pivoting. And all of a sudden, I'm standing on the second rail of the, <laughs> of the trailer trying to grab some frames. It's yeah. just what you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's okay. And I think there's a, there's a magic in that. Yeah. There's a magic in that. You know, one of the things that um, that has has fascinated me about bees in general and my journey, which is very fresh, still, you know, five months in, is the is how I feel like bees, no matter who, everybody that was in that class, when I went to B school, I don't care if there was a president of a bank in there. I don't care if there was a prince from another country. I don't care if there was a swimsuit illustrated model in there. We all, bees just level us. Mm -hmm. They just level us. Talk to us a little bit about how you see um, bees really doing that to people and, and helping us kind of get on the same page. And especially in a world where gosh, there's so many opinions and there's so many uh, people just arguing and mad. And what, what can bees teach us about how to, I, my book is called How to Human. What can bees teach us on how to truly human with each other? By the way, I want to write a book called How to Be. Boom. That's it. That's it. Just bam, just right there. Uh, inspired by Carlos. No way. That's um, awesome. You know, I feel like um, there's a lot of things to unpack there. I feel like uh, bees humble me on a daily basis. Yep. They humble uh, Catherine, who works with me here, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, you think you know what you, what's happening. You uh -huh. think you figured it out. All right, I know exactly what this bee is going to do, right. what they want, and then you fall right on your face. And wow. so every single day you're schooled yep. um, to keep on trying. I'm a rookie for life. I was a rookie mm. for life in the fire department too. It's very, very similar. Like wow. you never master. The day I master this thing, I'm going to quit. Yep. Uh, and that's a, you know, it, it's a healthy perspective. Uh, so yeah, you feel like you know what you're going to do. In the end, you and I right now, we have, you know, you probably have, a few hundred thousand daughters, right? I have about 5 million daughters. Yes, yes. Um, but we're on a similar path in that we think we figured this out or we think we know what they're going to do. And this is a wild animal that we have domesticated. Right. And in the end, it's going to do, do whatever it wants. Raising bees is like raising a teenager. Yes. You know, you're trying to steer them in the right direction. But in the end, all you can do is arm them as much as yeah. you can. You hear that, Lucia? And they're on their way. Yep. <laughs> you do your best. You try and teach them the right thing. You try and establish a safe, happy environment to thrive. Yeah. And you hope for the best. I said this earlier. I want to say it again. When yeah. when you're a good beekeeper or when you really feel like you got this thing is when you're enabling. I'm an enabler. Mm. I'm a professional enabler. I am finding out what my bees are really good at, uh, their traits, their happiness, their weaknesses. Yeah. By the way, you and I have baggage. We all have baggage. Yes. And for crying out loud, we got to start admitting it and saying, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with, but this is what I'm really good at. Yeah. So guess what? As your manager, as your partner, whatever it is, I want to enable my bees. I want to enable my partner to thrive. Um, enable good. my teenagers to thrive. Yeah. And these bees are teaching me that every day. This wow. bug has taught me that lesson. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe I get to say this, but I am partnering with a beekeeping partner for the podcast. What in the world? How is this even happening? That's right. Carlos Whitaker is now officially partnering and sponsored by Beekeepers Natural. Okay, Beekeepers Natural, uh, their mission is to reinvent the medicine cabinet. Okay, so this isn't necessarily just for you beekeepers. This is for those of you that want to stay organically healthy. They merge modern science with natural medicine to create clean, effective products that actually work, right? Propolis is the hero ingredient, which I've got in my backyard in my beach right now, okay? And it helps support their, our immune system, all sorts of things. And they also practice sustainable beekeeping and third-party test our formulas, their formulas, to ensure that their products are free from pesticides and heavy metals, okay? So now I talk about propolis on my podcast today, um, so I won't go deep into what propolis is with them, but trust me, they get the good stuff from the bees. They've got kids' throat soothing lollipops. They've got throat throat spray. I, I now 100% officially am using this stuff when my throat starts to get itchy. Okay. It's germ season. So propolis throat spray, again, it's available for kids and adults is a great daily proactive immune support that tastes good. And it really soothes your 
throat. So this is what I want you to do. Every single person is going to be super helpful for the podcast, but also for your body. Today, Beekeepers Naturals is offering you an exclusive offer. Go to beekeepersnaturals.com slash human hope and enter code human hope to get 20% off your order. That is B-E-E-K-E-E-P-E-R-S N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S dot com slash human hope or enter code human hope. That's what you got to do. Beekeepers natural products are also available at Target, Whole Food, Amazon, CVS, and all the places. This is a legit company and I'm so pumped to be partnering with them. Y'all know when I take my AG1, first thing in the morning, our next partner is Athletic Greens. I do. I take AG1 every single morning. Why? Well, I started because my gut was feeling funky, but I ended because it gives me energy and I know it's keeping me healthy. Now, what I love about AG1 is everything that they pack inside of it. Every single scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that give me major benefits, you two, like gut and mood support. I mean, both of them, right? If your gut feels good, your mood feels good, okay? And I don't know if your mood feels good, if your gut's going to feel good as well, but it also boosts my energy. And unfortunately for me, it gives everybody else healthier looking hair, but I don't have hair, so... It, it's really not doing it. I've been using AG1 for over two years, right? And not only am I still here, I feel like I'm feeling better than I ever have before. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash human hope. That's athleticgreens.com slash human hope. Check it out. You know, um, watching you do what you do and, you know, watching you teach the, this class for two days that we did and then watching you out here, um, there is something inside of you that, um, like, have you always loved to teach? Mm -hmm. Like, has this been something that it's not, it didn't, didn't just come out with the bees, but have you been teaching forever? Like, like always, have you always been a teacher? Yes. Uh, I think I've always been a storyteller as well. Okay. I love telling a story. Uh, I love, um, definitely love teaching. Grew up in a family of actors where we love expressing ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like when I got into beekeeping, there was not a lot of good teachers, okay. to be honest. Yeah. Um, I just didn't, it didn't I, resonate I, with I me. see them all on YouTube yes, right now. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's, we should say that too, for some of your followers that yes. are like, I want to get into beekeeping. Right. YouTube is great. It's also terrible. Oh, terrible. Oh Everybody's an expert. And yeah. this is the other thing that I, I really try and um, push with my beekeeping and uh, stuff on social media is that yeah. everybody's perfect on Instagram. Everybody's perfect oh, yeah. on, on YouTube. And they show you that their bees are awesome and everything's amazing. Well, I want to show you how I failed. Uh -huh. Like today, like I want to show you this queen is not cutting it. Like right. Jay did not raise a perfect queen. Right. I feel like we all need to do that more in our lives, whether it's beekeeping or whether it's whatever it is your profession is. Yeah. I think the more that we can be transparent and be be saying, look, this is what I'm doing well and this is what this is where I failed and this is what I'm gonna do about it. Right. I right. think that's the lesson. Everybody's gonna fall down. It's whether you get back up or mm -hmm. how you get back up. Uh, and make a difference that really matters to me. And and I don't know why, but beekeeping is my vehicle to, to pass it, that message. Oh, it is. It, I mean, it's, I, I'm definitely to the point now where, you know, my poor wife, anywhere we go to, okay. all, all my friends, the first thing they want to know is because none of them are beekeepers. How are the bees? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she's, she's just literally, she'll gasp. Uh, and then I just go and I'm talking and then they're like, wait a second, what's a virgin queen? Okay. Wait, queens are virgins and then they fly and then they mate and then the yeah. drones and then, you know, I'm all in, man. I am like, you know, I'm all yeah. in. I bought this book here. I bought a book while I was here. I, I got to stay here at South Hall one night called, was it Bee Democracy? Honey Bee Democracy. Honey Bee mm -hmm. Democracy. Yeah. Devoured that in a day. Mm -hmm. Like I, and my mind was blown. Two things in your head uh, that, just off the top of your head, that are that still blow your mind about bees. Like, like, like give, give me like top two or three things that you're like, I just, the fact that bees even do this blows my mind. I mean, like for instance, for me, the fact that bees will vote on where it is they, they're going to go live next uh -huh. is mind blowing yeah. to me, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that kind of stuff. That's probably the hardest question you can yeah. ask me today because I could go oh. on and on forever about yeah. it. A few things, okay. like fire off the top of my head. When bees fly through the air, they generate a positive electric charge. 
Did you know that all flowers in nature are negatively charged? No. So that when the bee lands on the flower, the what? pollen goes right to the bee. It's oh insane my or what? Gosh. Like we don't think of this sort of thing. No. That's a God level thing. Like yeah. let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Like that is amazing to me. Um, other things. When a, so when you want to swarm, when the hive is like, all right, it's time to go. We got, we're outgrowing the house. We got to go or whatever. Yeah. They send out scout bees to find wherever they're going to end up. Right. Those scout bees, let's say a hundred, they come back to the hive and they're trying to tell everybody else, like, this is where we got to go. They're trying yep. to do their dance, right? Yep. They're, yep. they're waggling and, and trying to show off, like, this is the direction to go. They are all screaming at the same time. I found the best spot. I found the best spot. Guess what? the bees are better listeners. Like they're speaking, but guess what? They're listening even more. Uh -huh. And so when a hundred are saying the same message, then sooner or later, all those into one message and the entire hive will get up or half the hive will get up and leave and go to that new colony or that new spot because they all are listening right. more than speaking. And that's another message. That like, is here we go. Message. Keep on going I'm, back. I'm ready for B, your B book. <laughs> this is so good, man. I mean, have you ever met someone that like, you can tell they're waiting for you to finish for them to speak. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, the worst. Yeah, yeah, all the time, and yeah. and they're not listening. And right. these bees that that they're literally all they're doing is like processing what your what the scout bee is coming back to tell them. Yeah. And then they're all singing the same thing, doing the same dance together. Yeah. And by the way, since we're talking about waggle dances, yeah. another thing there's a bonus thing for oh, you. Bonus. Waggle dances are taught. So a waggle dance is a generational thing. You, what? Yeah, so the elders in the hive will be like, no, move your booty, shake it this way, don't shake it that way. It is a literally taught skill uh, passed on from generation to generation. I love that. You can't ignore your past. Our history matters to us. And that's uh, I, demonstrated I, right here. I don't, I, don't even, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say after you just said those three things. Okay, for, for those that are listening and have no idea what you're talking about when you say a waggle dance, what, what, what are you okay. talking about? Good question. So uh, bees will go out, they'll find a nectar source, right? Oh, this flower um, this far away is, is a great spot for us to collect nectar. Comes back to the hive, shares a little bit of that honey, like passes it on, says, okay. hey, get a load of this, take a hit of this. Oh, wow. And then the, the offspring or everybody else in the colony says, okay, well, how do I get there? So they trace, they dance the shape of a heart and the base of the heart points to the nectar source out in the field but on top of that, it's in relation to the sun. So they will dance the heart at an angle in relation to the sun. So, all right, so that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. I'm well, what cool. happens if like two minutes later, Carlos is like, all right, I'm gonna go to this, this right. nectar that yeah, Jay yeah. is talking about. Well, the sun's moved. So they have to calculate in their head, it's been two minutes and 30 seconds since I saw that waggle dance and I'm gonna figure out where to go. Here's where the shape of the heart is. All right, near's where the sun is, now I find where I'm going. They're constantly computing it. The size of the heart, the bigger the heart, the yeah. farther away it is, the smaller the heart, the what? closer. Yeah, Amazing. it's insane. And somebody sat and watched and studied this to figure it out. To the person that's scared of bees, to the person that, mm -hmm. that is, um, well, first of all, who, who is the person that sat and figured this out, that, that watched the heart shape? Do we know? Tom Seeley? Was it? No. Maybe it was no Langstroth, Lorenzo Lang, hundreds of years ago, by the way. This is, this is another good thing that's, that's good for, for your listeners to know is yep. beekeeping is cutting edge. It's great. And yet it hasn't changed in 200 years, 250 years. So we are still tapping into the history. We're still tapping into this old timey cool skill. I add, you know, Bluetooth sensors and I add all my, yeah. I'm a techie guy, I love yeah, this stuff. Too, yeah. But the thing is in the end, this is a skill that's been around forever. And the guys hundreds of years ago um, studied the waggle dance and figured it all out. I think the guy who figured it out was blind, wasn't he? And his assistant taught him, like traced it out for what? him. Yeah. Von Frisch. Oh, okay. Is, is this dude from the place you say that one in four people are beekeep, beekeepers? I no. don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Lorenzo Langstroth is the, the modern day or the father of the kind of hives that you and I have. Yeah. Uh, and he was in the 1700s. Okay. So we are literally practicing wow. a skill from the 1700s. I love that. Honey, th that, that in, in a new beekeeper's head is when I first said I'm going to beekeep, my thought was, yeah, because I'm just going to be drinking honey. Like mm -hmm. that is from day one, like honey. Now it's, it's, it's funny how it has switched in my head. I'm like, and I, it's gone from wanting honey to wanting my colony to thrive and wanting, you know, all. And so suddenly yeah. like that is now the end goal. Mm -hmm. But talk to us about, about honey production um, and how much honey can, say somebody's thinking, yeah, I want to, I want to become a beekeeper, beginning beekeeper. Are they ever going to be able to get honey? Like, 
What's that look like? So typically most people say, I'm going to get beehives because I'm going to get honey in right. a couple months. It's yep. going to be great. Give yep. it to all my friends. Totally not reality. Not at all. You're learning it, living it right yep. now. Typically, um, a beekeeper will start a hive and 18 months later is when they actually harvest their first wow. harvest. Wow. And it all depends on where you live, how much you harvest and when. But in Tennessee, you can expect from an average colony about 60 pounds of honey okay. a year. 60 after pounds. After the honey or after the hive is adult, after, after they've grown up. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to take a while. We are all about the bees, not about the honey, believe uh -huh. it or not. Honey sometimes is annoying, let's be honest. Yeah. Because it's like, oh man, this thing is heavy. You got to feel it today. I got like, to feel it today. I got to deal with this thing. I mean, it's great, but it's also like, whew, like this is a lot of work. Yeah. I am about raising bees that my kids can appreciate someday. Yeah. I am about trying to create this quality genetic, this good stock that's going to help bring back all the bees that have died off in Tennessee. Yeah. But in terms of honey, honey's amazing. Yeah. It's one of the only uh, foods out there that will never spoil. You can eat honey from ancient Egypt. Really? Uh, it changes in flavor. Sure. but honey is literally a living, breathing organism. I told you I just got back from Honey Sommelier School, yes, level one, uh, and I learned so much in this school. But what I learned the most is that this living, breathing organism never tastes the same as the honey next door to it. So like, uh, you know, everybody thinks I've tasted honey, I know what it is, yeah. but honey is a direct representation of the terroir, the territory that it came from. So the VOCs, volatile organic compounds that honey is emitting, that smell okay. that you smell, yep, yep. it all is dictated by where it was made, how it was made, were the bees happy? Literally right. the behavior of the bees dictates the flavor of this honey because were they active? Were they going out and gathering honey from the clover or the right. basswood or the locust? Right. Or were they like, eh, I'm just gonna go off the Coke can huh. and the curb. You yeah. know, it's, it's all a matter of perspective in the bees. So this honey will change depending on how long it's been around. Um, it's constantly giving moisture to the air or okay. taking moisture back. Um, there are, I learned there's multiple varieties or families. Um, so when you smell honey first, you can get a floral smell, a fruity smell, an animal smell, wow. a chemical smell. There's honey that smells like stinky feet. No. Yes. And it's all the rage in Europe. Really? <laughs> all the rage in Europe. Yes. There's, uh, it's, uh, there's a eucalyptus honey that I had to taste over and over again at this class. <laughs> thought I was going to Ralph everywhere, <laughs> but it's part of the experience. Yeah. Uh, there's other, other honey called sweet chestnut honey, okay. um, tree of heaven honey, um, considered delicacies in America. We probably wouldn't go for it, but right. it's a, it's, it's amazing characteristics um, that you'd never know yeah. until you go through this thing. My goal here at Southall is that everybody that comes to my honey tastings yep. uh, that we do on the weekends um, is that when you're done with honey tasting, you go home. I always make this joke, open up your pantry. Uh -huh. I want you to grab that squeezy bear that yep. I know you have, and yep. I want you to throw it out the window totally. and never look back because what you have in your pantry right now is not honey. It's not honey. It's honey flavored syrup. It's wow. a joke. Uh, and we have a huge problem. It's called honey laundering. What? In the US where honey is brought in from other countries and then cut with uh -huh. syrup, water, whatever it is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. So wow. as much as I can promote going home and supporting your local beekeeper, uh -huh. raising bees yourself, yep. um, taking care of yourself with a good product, Absolutely. taking care of bees at the same time, we're yeah. all gonna win. If I take care of my honey, my bees, yeah. um, the product is gonna be much better. Yeah. It's about fostering a safe environment for my queens and their offspring. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in a team environment and yeah. so, when I win or when bees win, I win. It's it's a we're in this thing together. Right. Um, your queens can last you two to three years if you take care of them. Mm. It's great lessons. Like mm -hmm. treat her right and yeah. she'll stick around. Yeah. Uh, and so when you do that, you get much better honey, and then you're really the most popular house in the neighborhood. Totally. Because everybody wants what you got. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in my house, we have honey on tap. That is <laughs> literally so, it's on uh, tap. That is so cool. I'm gonna make my way to your house so that I can get some <laughs> honey on tap. Um, podcast is called Human Hope. I love to ask my guest, what is giving you hope these days? So right now, as we're recording this, it is middle of the summer, 2023. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be bees. It can be anything. What is giving Jay hope these days? What's giving me hope these days is this, this kind of a conversation. What's giving me hope is people saying, hey, how do you feel? How's mm -hmm. it going today? Yeah. Uh, looking me in the eye, yeah. um, acknowledging me, and I'm acknowledging them back. I'm noticing this because I do feel like we have an issue right now. We have a challenge. And I'm noticing this maybe because I'm putting it out there, but I'm right. getting it back at the right. same time. Um, what's giving me hope these days is that around us, everything is blooming yeah. and everything is alive yeah. uh, and vibrant. Yeah. Um, you know, I. I'm I'm hopeful for my kids' future, yeah. uh, and I wasn't over you yeah. know the last few years. Yeah. 
I'm hopeful for what we're all trying to do for each other. Yeah. Um, I think we went to a dark space and I think we're now starting to wake up and be rebounded. Agreed. And you're, I think, leading that. I, I hear you, that in your voice. Yeah. I see that on the road when you're doing it. Yeah. Um, I think people want this. Yeah. They want this conversation. They want you know to know that there are other people like them that are struggling and also that are healing. Yes. Um, I don't think I have to have a message just because I'm struggling. Right. I think my message is we are all struggling together yes. and we can heal together at the same time. Yeah, I love it. Dude. Thanks so much. Thank you, this buddy. Has been amazing. Anytime. Awesome.